there so november is now officially underway and for some it is non-fiction november where you read non-fiction books throughout the month of november now, this year i'm going to do the same thing as i did last year which is not to read only non-fiction books in november because that's not something that i would enjoy i think it would become a chore i need a bit of a fiction fix in there just to keep me happy because that is what i prefer to read but what I did last year is I did read more non-fictions in the month of November, which is what I'm going to do this year. So normally I read one non-fiction a month, but this time I'm going to read, I've got four non-fictions here, plus a magazine, which I've decided to count because I think, you know, it's still non-fiction, it's still reading. So we'll jump straight in with the magazine, which is a Breathe. I have been meaning to pick up a magazine for a very long time. But to be honest, they're just as expensive as a book, really. So I've kind of been putting it off, hesitant to spend that much money. But I treated myself to this last week and I have been really enjoying it so far. I am posting this just after November has started. So I have started some of these already. Um, this is a, just a really fantastic little relaxing magazine. It's got pretty things in it. It's got interesting articles. It's just quite pleasant to experience and I've been really enjoying that. Um, I'm letting myself read an article or two a day it's also interesting because this is the kind of thing I write for my job um, so it's quite good to see it done in print and sort of be able to take from the studies and the ideas that they use in this and use that in my day job so I've been really enjoying that one then on terms of the books I will talk about the ones that I've already started first so I've got Chavs The Demonization of the Working Class by Owen Jones I have got the physical copy here but I'm actually listening to this on audiobook Owen Jones has got a YouTube channel which I'll link down below um, and he's also a writer for The Guardian and this was a book he released quite a few years ago about the way that the Tories and the media kind of put a lot of rubbish on the working class and kind of try and turn everybody against the people at the bottom. Um, it's really interesting, it's a bit heavy for me. Um, I am a political person and I do find it really fascinating and really infuriating to learn about these things, but it is quite heavy. Also with the audiobook I've got, there is a forward written in 2016, a forward written in I think 2007 and the prologue for the book. So actually it was about two hours in before the book even started. So by that point, you know, things had got a bit much. Um, it is heavy and it looks a lot at political figures of the past. Um, there's a lot in there about Margaret Thatcher, etc. Um, but it's interesting and I think it's important. So I'm going to keep reading that one or listening to, as it were. Then I have also started last night, Margaret Atwood's Negotiating with the Dead. This is a book on writing. Um, I bought it a few years ago thinking a book on writing by Margaret Atwood, amazing. Um, but it wasn't quite what I was expecting. So this isn't a memoir or a book that looks particularly at Margaret Atwood's process. It looks at what it is to be a writer in the general sense of the word. Why do we write? How do we write? What is a writer? How is a writer perceived in society? Um, it's a collection of talks, basically, that she's given about being a writer, um, but not about her personal experience, just about the wider idea of these writers. Um, it's really interesting so far actually, I'm enjoying it a lot more than I did the first time, I think because I've gone into it knowing that it's not just a writing memoir, it's a bit more heavy and it looks a bit more into the technicalities of who writers are and why they are who they are in society, um, but I am, as I say, enjoying it so far. I've only read the introduction, but that was really good. So hopefully I'm going to enjoy this a little bit more this time around. And the two that I haven't yet got to are Quiet by Susan Cain. I have started reading this and I was enjoying it, but I put it to the side and never picked it up again. Again, it's quite a heavy non-fiction, but it looks at the place that introverts play in the world. Um, it looks at the power of being a quiet person which I think is a fantastic fantastic thing because a lot of the time sort of introverts and quiet people are shunned to the side you know and it's all about the extrovert and they're in the positions of power in the world um, and this kind of turns it on its head and looks at the really important people in the world who have been introverts and also the power of just being quiet how that can help you get far as well as being an extrovert 
And then I've got the Four Loves by C.S. Lewis. I actually bought this years and years ago for research. It is a look at the different types of love and what each of them mean and how they vary. Um, that's about all I know of it, but I would like to get to it because I think it's going to be quite interesting. I haven't actually read anything of C.S. Lewis other than obviously Narnia and such forth. Um, so it'll be interesting to read a bit more of him. So there's that one. So that is everything I'm going to be reading in non-fiction November. Please let me know down below what you will be reading. It'll be interesting to hear what everyone else is getting up to this month. And I will see you next time. Bye.